Thank you for your interest in our products. In this video, we'll show you how to install and configure our Titan VS Access desktop software. Attention! The Titan VS Access version we are going to use in this video is V1.0.00261. We are now going to install this in a computer that is the Microsoft Windows 10 operating system, but it's also compatible with Windows 7 or 8. Important! This access control system is not compatible with Mac computers. The instructions in this video will work for our 2 and 4 doors ETL and DLX series version 2.0. If you missed your software CD or did not come included in the package, please download it from our website. Go to visionistech.com. Then hover over the support menu and click on the submenu titled Titan VS Access Desktop Software. Then click on Download Software. Keep in mind that the download process can take from 1 to 5 minutes. Installing the Titan VS Access Go into your PC's download folder and double-click on the Titan VS Access folder. Double-click on the setup.exe file. Wait for it to unzip it. Then you will be prompted with a screen that is called Titan VS Access Install Shield Wizard. Click on Next. Then enter your username and organization and click on Next. Click Next again. On the Custom Setup, make sure you click on Attendant System and then select This Feature and all sub-features will be installed on local hard drive. Then click on Next and Install and wait for the software to install. Click on Launch the program and then on Finish. OK, now leave username as administrator and password leave it blank. There is no password at this point. Also make sure expert mode is checked and then click on OK. If you got this message, just press OK. After that, the Titan VS Access software should open. Changing Titan VS Access Password to change the software's password, please go to the upper left corner and click on Platform. Then on the drop-down menu, click on Change Password. You can leave blank the old password field since there is not a default password. Then type the new password and type it again in the Confirmed field and click OK to save the new password. Detect, add, and initialize the controller. Now that we have done that, make sure that you have your access control panel turned on and that you have connected it to your router via LAN network connection. If this is not done, the next step will not work. In this case, we are connecting the panel directly to the PC. In this section, we'll show you how to properly add the controller. First, click on Communication Setup. Then click on Network Controller. Then click on Refresh the icon below the controller title. You should see now the devices connected to the network. Select the device with the correct MAC address. On the right, on the Properties section, you'll see the device's basic parameters such as device type, MAC address, and version number. Under the Communication Parameter subsection, you can change the IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway to the desired network configuration. In this case, we leave it as default. Now, go to the Wi-Fi icon on your computer. Right-click on it and click on Open Network and Internet Settings. Go to Ethernet. On the right side of the screen, click on Change Adapter Options and select Ethernet. In this case, the panel is connected to the Ethernet. That's why we right-click on it. And we click on Properties. Wait until you see the option TCP slash IPv4 on the list. Click on it and then click on the button Properties. Check Use the following IP address and in the IP address field type 192.168.0.100 subnet mask. It's already 255.255.255. 
1.255.0. On default gateway, you will type 192.168.0.1 and then click on OK. Click on Close. and go back to the Titan VS Access window. On the left menu, click on Controller, and then right-click on Controller List, and add Controller. On the right under Property, you can see and change the device name, the model, and the door quantity. In this case, the door quantity field, we select two, since there is a two-door panel. Under the subsection Communication Parameter, you can also set the IP address for the panel. In this case, put the default IP address 192.168.0.245 and then click on Save. You can find the icon below the property bar title. After that, right-click on the controller and click on Detect Controller. If everything goes well, you will see detecting completed on the task report section that is located on the bottom of the screen. Now, right-click on the controller and click on Acquire Current Time. Right-click again and select Adjust Time. Right-click one more time on the controller and click on Initialize Controller and then click on OK. Now the controller has been successfully added to the network. If you need to set the card readers one for entrance and the other for exit, we'll show you the step-by-step -step process. On the left menu, click on Controller, then click on the controller's name. Since this is a two-door panel, you can select door quantity one or two. In this case, we have selected two doors. On the left menu, we click on the door option, and we can see that there are two doors listed. If we select door one, here the name is Enter and for door number two is the same. What this means is that the two card readers are entrance card readers for each door. If we want to change that, we go back to controller and in door quantity, we select one and then we click on save and okay. Then we go to Door option, and now we can see only one door. But under the Property section, now we have two subsections, Reader 1 Parameter and Reader 2 Parameter. Reader 1 is named as Enter, and Reader 2 is named as Exit. For the next step, go to the Alarm option on the left menu. Click on the controller and on the list that shows up, scroll down to Reader 1 Threaten Code and Reader 2 Threaten Code and under the column Output 1, select Trigger. This means that the two card readers will control door 1. Don't forget to click on the Save icon. Next, go to the Setup Download section on the left menu. Right-click on the controller and click on Start Smart Download. This will save the new parameters on the controller. In this section, we will show you how to properly add cards and employees. If you have a keypad and or reader, please make sure it is set to Wigan mode so it can communicate with the controller. All right, go to the Cards section on the left menu. Right-click on the white space and click on Controller Add Card. This is to add the card by swiping it on the reader. Select the controller and click OK. Swipe the card in front of the reader and you will see that the card number pops up on the screen. Click on the X icon to stop reading and click OK. Then go to the Employee section on the left menu. You can see here that the system has automatically added an employee for that card. If you click on the number, the property section for that item will show up on the right. You can rename the card holder by editing the name field. In this case, we will enter Test01. Here is also the card number and the default access group is Administrator Group. This means that this card will have access to all doors 24-7. Now click on Save. On the left menu, go to Setup Download. Right-click on the controller and click on Start Smart Download. This will save the new parameter on the controller. 
Now go back to the card section. Right click on the white space and click on add card manually. Then enter the first set of numbers printed on the card without the first three zeros and click OK and OK. After this, the card will be added. Go to the Employees section and rename the new card holder. In this case, we will enter Test02. Click on Save. Go again to set up download. Right click on the controller and start smart download. This will save the new parameters on the controller. In this section, we will show you how to properly add a pin code. First, click on the employee section on the left menu. Then select the employee you want to add the pin code to. In this case, we select test01. Under the Property section, go to the Card and Group subsection and click on the Password field. Enter a password. It must be six digits long. Then click on Save. Go to Setup Download. Right-click on the controller and start Smart Download. This will save the new parameter on the controller. Now you can enter the new six-digit code in the keypad and it should release the lock. If you want to add a new employee for the PIN code, go to the Employee section, right-click on the white space and click Add Employee. In this case, we're going to name it PIN Code 01. And under Password, we enter the six-digit password and then click on Save. Go to Setup Download, right-click on the controller, and click Start Smart Download to save the new parameter on the controller. Now you can enter the new six-digit code in the keypad, and it should release the lock. How to add week schedules in Access Groups On the left menu, click on the Week Schedule section and right-click on the white space and click Add Common Week Schedule. On the Properties section, rename the week schedule. In this case, we're going to name it 8-5. Then we add the schedule that we want for our employees to have access. For this example, we select under the column Starting Time 1, 8 o'clock, and under Column End Time 1, 1700, which means 5 p.m. Right-click on the row you just added it and select Copy to All Days. We're going to delete Sundays and Saturdays hours. And then we click on Save. Go to the Access Group section on the left menu. Right-click on the white space and click Add Access Group. On the Properties section, rename the Access Group. In this case, we're going to name it 85. Under the column Permit Access, select Yes for the doors you want to have access. Here we select Yes on door 1 or front door, and for door 2 or back door, we leave it on No. Under the column Week Schedule, we add our 8 to 5 week schedule to our door 1. This means that this group will only have access to this door from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then click on Save. Now, go to the Employees section on the left menu. For this example, we're going to leave John in the Administrator Access Group. But for the other employees, Keyfob, Lewis, and TestX, we select 85 under the option Access Group. This means that they will have access to Door 1 from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Click OK and then click on Save. To save the new parameters on the controller, go to Setup Download, right-click on the controller and click on Start Smart Download. How to set Remain Open or Remain Closed Schedule 
Start by selecting the Week Schedule section on the left menu. Right-click on the white space and click on Add Common Week Schedule. Rename the week schedule. Here, we're going to name it 12 to 1. Then we add the schedule that we want our door to open and close. We select under the column Starting Time 1, 12 o'clock. And under the column End Time 1, 1300. Then we right-click on the row we just edited and select Copy to All Days. We delete Sundays and Saturdays hours, and then we click on Save. Now on the left menu, we click on the Door section. Select the front door, and under the Property section, we look for the Open Mode field and we select Normal Open automatically. For the option Normal Open Week Schedule, we select our 12 to 1 schedule and we click on Save. This means that Door 1 or Front Door will automatically open from Monday to Friday at 12 p.m. and will automatically close at 1 p.m. For the last step, go to Setup Download on the left menu, right-click on the controller, and click Start Smart Download to save the new parameters on the controller. How to set real-time monitoring. Click on the Real-Time Monitor tab, then click on Enter Map Monitoring. The next step is optional if you would like to add a background image. Click on Load Background Image. Select the background image and click on Open. After the image loads, we click on Add Slash Reduce Monitor Point. And on the list, you select the doors of your panel. In this case, we select front door and back door. Close the window to exit this option, and on the upper left side, you will see a door icon. Click and drag to move the door into its corresponding position on the map image, and do the same with the other door icon. Click on Save. Now, click on Enter Map Monitoring, and then click on Start Monitoring. After that has been done, we can start seeing the real-time monitoring. Here, we swiped one card in both readers and activated the Exit button. You can see the events on the event list at the bottom of the screen. When you're done monitoring, you need to click on Stop Monitoring and click on OK. If you want to start Real-Time Monitor again, go to the Real-Time Monitor tab, click on Enter Map Monitoring, and then on Start Monitoring. When you're done monitoring, just click on Stop Monitoring and click on OK. How to open Force Open and Force Close Doors on the left menu, go to the Door section. Click on the door you want to control, then right-click on it and click on Open Door. To force open, right-click on the door and click on Force Open. This will open the door and it will remain open until you cancel Force State. You can also right-click on the door and click on Force Close. This will close the door and remain closed until you cancel Force State. You can also find these options by going to the Real-Time Monitor tab. There, click on Enter Map Monitoring. Click on Start Monitoring and then right-click on any part of the background and select Force Open All Doors. This will open all doors, and they will remain open until you cancel all doors for state. To force close all doors, you can right-click on any part of the background and select that option on the menu. This will close all doors and they will remain closed until cancel all doors for state. If any door is on force state, even if you swipe a valid card, it will not change state until you cancel force state. 
look how the lock icon changes state. Once you're done monitoring, click on Stop Monitoring and click on OK. How to set a door lock delay On the left menu, go to the Door section, click on the door you want to control. On the right side, under the Properties section, click on the Door Lock Delays field and set the delay time that the lock will remain unlocked after the activation. In this case, we're going to set it into 5 seconds and then click on Save. Then go to Setup Download. On the left menu, right-click on the controller and click Start Smart Download to save the new parameters on the controller. How to Upload in Search Event Records Go to the Event Record Upload on the left menu. Right-click on the controller and click on the option Upload Record. This will show you the latest records on the controller. Now go to the tab Information Query and on the left menu click on Event Record. If you select a starting time and an end time and then click on Icon Query, this will show you all the events during the time period you selected. How to set the time in attendance On the left menu, go to the Department section and create a department. In this case, we call it FPC. Then we go to the Employees section and we make sure that all the employees we want to be on the time in attendance are on that department. On the main menu, in the top bar, we select System and we select Attendance Management System. On the left menu, we click on Attendance Rule and in the field, Attendance Mode, we select Complex Attendance. Here we can adjust the Late and Leave parameters in Overtime parameters, but we are going to leave them like this for this case. If you make changes, you have to click on Save. Then we go to Day Schedule and we click on New Schedule. Under the Properties section, we select for Valid Start Time of Presenting Card. We set 0000. And for Valid End Time of Presenting Card Time, we set 2359 covering the whole day. On the subsection Shift parameter, we select the time of duty of the two shifts. In this case, we select 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock and 1300 to 1700 and then we click on save. On the left menu, we click on the shift section and we select all the employees. On the right, we select the new schedule and we click on every day of the month and next month also. Then we click on Save. We wait for it to process. And then on the left menu, we go to Attendance Count. We select the current start date and end date. We right-click on the department's name and we click on Count All Employees. Finally, click OK. Now we go to the top bar menu and click on System and we select Access Control Management System. On the left menu, we click on Event Record. Right click on the controller and click on the Upload Record. Once the record is uploaded, we go back to the menu System and we select Attendance Management System. We click on the Information Query tab and on the left menu, we click on Attendance Result Detail. We select the Start Date and End Date and click on Search. On the right, we can see the Attendance Report 
and we can export it to an Excel file by clicking the icon with a green X on the top of the list. Give a name to your file and click on Save. Wait until the system shows you the Export Data Successfully pop-up message. Click on OK. How to create a backup of the database. To create a backup of your database, all you need to do is exit the software. The system will show you a message asking if you need a backup. Select the directory where you want to save the database and click Yes and then OK. How to import the database to a new PC. All you need to do is go to the folder where you have saved the database. Enter to the latest folder and copy the property file. You can save it on a flash drive or send it via email. Then go to the new PC, get the property file from the flash drive or email, and access the database folder in the new computer. Paste there the property file and replace the current one with the one you have saved from the first PC.